So I thought I'd do a sociology video. I don't think I've done many of these, um, even though sociology is what I have my bachelor's degree in. I've focused more on economics and philosophy for the most part. Um, a while back I read Jürgen Habermas's book uh, called The Theory of Communicative Action, which uh, I don't particularly recommend this book to beginners because it's, it's very dense and uh, it, the one reason it's taken me so long to do this video is because it's taken me so long to kind of integrate uh, what that book had to say. Um, I'm still kind of working through it. Uh, but uh, for Habermas, what he's uh, focusing on is kind of the dual nature of society as both a life world and a system. Um, now, the life world is a concept that he borrows from Husserl. Uh, which is basically kind of a the universe of the given. It's, it's a kind of horizon of possible meanings that can emerge. Uh, for gosh, says, but where whereas Husserl uh, focuses on consciousness, Habermas is more interested in discourse and in kind of intersubjective sphere. Uh, you know, the space of a you know, human connection. And so, from you know, the the life world is governed by what he calls communicative action which is action oriented towards coming to a mutual understanding and a sort of interpretive agreement. Uh, and so the, the life world is open to dialogue and practical rationality. Um, now the system aspect, on the other hand, is made of objective social structures uh, which mediate social relations. Uh, they have their own kind of, uh, a system has its own technical rationality as opposed to the kind of practical rationality of, of the life world. Uh, so it has its own kind of internal logic uh, that it operates by, and which may or may not be kind of consistent with the logic of the life world. Um, and so systems are built up through uh, what are called steering media, uh, which are media that objectify social relations uh, such that there's no mutual understanding uh, you know, or no, no, no interpretive understanding required to come to in order to participate in, in these systems. Uh, so like money would be a great example of this. You know, market relations don't require that you uh, be of the same culture or speak the same language, or um, or really understand what the other person is is saying at all. You just need to. It, it's it's just like you know the exchange of, of goods, and that's all you need to know. And then the uh, that is the limit of that social relation. Um, you know, another example would be like bureaucratic power, where um, you know we understand we're. Uh, we're made to understand, you know, authority by, based on someone wearing a police uniform or be or occupying a particular, uh, you know, uh, congressional seat, or something like that. So, um, so, so that's steering media. Um, now, what I was concerned with is the colonization of the life world, uh, which is where this kind of the kind of technical rationality of a system comes uh, to in, kind of invade. The, the life world, so that um, the instrumental logic of that system gains communicative power and penetrates social discourse, uh, and therefore creates these kind of illegitimate social norms, which are justified by the kind of technical technical rationality of the system, uh, rather than by uh, the discursive rationality of the life world. Um, so I mentioned you know money in the market economy, so. Uh, you know, on, on the micro level, for example, you have like the profit motive where, uh, you know, the um, a corporation has a fiduciary responsibility to its shareholders to uh, maximize return. So they will pursue the profit motive at the expense of the planet, of social relations. It, it you know, even, um, even things that might affect the people who are in the corporation. Um, you know, the, the thing kind of operates according to its own logic and people are kind of bound by that technical logic uh, and kind of blinded to the broader um, social logic of the of life world. Um, you know, another example is kind of our political and electoral system where, you know, we have these two parties who vie for power and we, we, we understand that um, decisions are, are being made by electing one of the other, of the other parties and uh, you know, the, and the, and they have different positions, and so that we understand, you know, th this idea that there's a liberal and a conservative position on e on uh, each issue, and that kind of confines the social discourse to these these positions, and anything outside of that, it's just kind of noise, uh, no matter how reasonable it could be. And 
uh, you know, Chomsky writes about this in his in his book Manufacturing Consent. You know, it's basically you know, you define the parameters in which discourse can take place so that uh, any really radical any radical ideas that might actually get to the root of the problem are kind of uh, silenced. And so I think um, this helps create a mission for an anarchist anthropology uh, where we develop our critique of capitalist and status systems based on their kind of disassociation from the life world um, and subject the the demand the system to the demands of the life world. Um, we need to decolonize life world and reground it uh, when you reground systems into the life world. Um, and one of the things that needs to be done for that is to uh, dissolve hierarchical systems because hierarchy uh, creates a sort of unequal um, basis of communication. So, uh, you know, it, you, between, you can't have genuine communication between people with different, in different hierarchical positions because, uh, you know, it, it's, it ceases to be a a space of, of uh, mutual interpretive agreement, and instead becomes a you know, power struggle, or or a, or a system of trying to uh, gain something from the other person, or uh, you know appease them, or or what have you. Um, and so what we need to do is you know also democratize communicative power. As, as I said, you know the the colonization of the life world involves uh, you know the sort of um, the, the sort of instrumental logic of a system uh, gaining communicative power over the discourse, and so uh, we need to strengthen the communicative power of those who who are kind of kept out of of that discourse through this colonization. Um, you know, and, and the internet. Uh, I think I think a lot of people have this intuitive sense about about the sort of democratic possibilities of the internet, and um, how it can give greater voice to a greater diversity of of views. Um, so you know, by by doing that, what we what we do is we expand uh, what what he calls the public sphere, which is something he wrote in, about in an early book called uh, Transformation of the Public Sphere, which is basically an area of discursive relations, um, in which ideas can be discussed and 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 debated and and come to um, interpretive agreement. Uh, so what what we need to do in transforming society is create systems that serve the public sphere, and um, which dissolve hierarchy and um, uh, instead strengthen the life world. So uh, I guess I'll leave it there for now. Peace.